Hello again pinball people and arcade aficionados, welcome to Pinforge. In this video we're going to take a little bit of a break from pinball and we're going to do some work on this Ultracade arcade machine. Now we can see here we have an Ultracade conversion in a nice dynamo cabinet with a nice 25 inch monitor. It was a system which allowed emulation of classic arcade games but they were actually licensed so the whole thing was legal and legit, unlike so many of the multicades and mames and different things that we see today. Now, this game actually has been sitting for quite a while, and it had been when I originally purchased it. I started rewiring it. It had some hacking going on on the inside. There was a couple different harnesses and a couple different weird things which they had tried to install. Maybe I'll show a little bit of that. But the biggest issue is that the PC which runs inside of this thing is not booting up and playing the games as we would like. So let's just take a look at that. And here is our Ultracade PC. We can see it's a fairly compact little unit considering it actually is a 1 gigahertz PC with some RAM. I think there's like 128 megabytes of RAM or something. So for the era that this came out, it's actually a pretty compact little unit. There's also an I.O. board and uh, the video board which allows the computer to interface with the arcade game through the JAMA connector. So that's pretty neat. Um, yeah, there's some cabling and stuff here too. I'm actually going to sell this Ultracade stuff and convert the cabinet to just be a regular JAMA cabinet where I'll play a bunch of different JAMA boards which I have. I might drop in a MAME system as well which would kind of be a more modern sort of take on this idea. I've got the uh, Sumicom Ultracade computer connected to a monitor here. I'll just fire it up, we can see what it's doing. I've got a PC power supply here that I'm using. The Ultracade computer requires 12 volts, so I just have this wired up. Plug that in. What we'll notice right away is when we apply power to the power supply, we'll hear the fan but it doesn't come up. So in its default, well in its configuration when it's inside the machine, what should happen when we apply power is this should come on. So I'll press the button here. We can see it starts to come on. Now the fan is pretty loud. That's not an issue that we're going to resolve today. But what we will see when it boots is that it presents us with an error code. It's just testing the memory. Okay, so it's told us that we have a CMOS checksum error. It's also telling us that the CPU has changed. It's telling us the defaults were loaded. Uh, it's saying, please enter, remember to save, da da da. So, what this tells us is that most likely the battery, which retains the uh, BIOS, the CMOS information inside of the computer, has gone dead. What we'll do is we'll just open this sucker up, we'll take a look at that CMOS battery, and I'm hoping we can just change that thing out and then we should be good to go. Before I replace this battery, I'm just going to fire up the computer and then skip past the error that it shows when it boots, because it will actually boot up into the game menu, but we'll see that it acts kind of weird. Now again, I've applied power, it didn't come on as we'd expect, I'm going to have to press the power button. starting to fire up. The fan is a little loud. It's as if it boots up and it does some diagnostics and thinks about it for a little while and then the fan will speed up and it'll start booting. I had to press the reset a couple times to get it to start to actually boot so I mean obviously when this thing was in the machine that would be a big issue even if you had a keyboard installed it would still be kind of a problem so we see here that we have the option to press F1 to continue, so I'll just press F1 on the keyboard and we'll let it boot and we'll see what happens when it actually boots but it has the uh, failed BIOS battery. Okay, Ultracade. And there we go, now it's booted, but you can see it's acting all flaky. It's flashing, and then when you know, when we push up and down to scroll through the menu, it is working, but it's just acting all flaky. 
And if I leave it here for a while, it will actually error out and show us an error message on the screen. So I suspect that what's happening here is the CPU which is installed in the computer isn't configured correctly within the BIOS with the default settings and that's making it act all funky so that or you know whatever else with the BIOS battery being dead it really makes the thing totally unusable after it ran for a while we eventually got this fatal error and you can see the things just on a black screen so we'll have to go ahead and replace this battery so let's replace the battery and we will uh, update the BIOS settings accordingly. Hopefully it will be retained and our game will be working fine. Now to open this thing up, we're just going to remove these four screws on the back and this whole thing will slide out and then we'll see what the computer inside looks like. Now I've removed the screws so we can just slide the case open and there's our computer. There's the battery right there. Here's a little closer look at our CMOS battery. So we can just pull that guy out of there. And we've got a 3 volt coin cell battery. So we'll just check this with the meter. I'm expecting it's probably going to be dead. Now we have our voltmeter here set to DC volts. Just give it a check. and we're at 0 0.04 so this battery is totally dead I'll put it on the 2 volt scale it'll be a little more accurate but we will still see yeah this battery is just totally dead so I'll pull out a new one we'll just uh, take a look at the new one with the meter just to see the difference and then I'll install it in the game and we'll see what changes if we take a close look at this battery we can see the numbers 2032 there. That's going to be the part number of the replacement battery which we need. And I just happen to have those right here. Here's the new battery. We check it with our meter. And there we go, we're at 3.3 .3 volts. So this is a fresh new battery. I'll just drop that in there. And again, it's 2032. It's quite a bit bigger on this one, so that's a little nicer. Now the battery basically just going to drop back into this slot, but make sure that you note the polarity. So it's indicated plus there, and we can see it also says plus on the battery. So we'll just put plus to plus, push it down, and there we go, our battery's installed. Now I'm just going to boot it up with the case off. We will adjust the settings in the BIOS so that the game powers up when you apply power, and we'll take a look and see if there's any other configurations that we want to make. Hopefully those settings should be saved on reboot and the thing will fire up and play the games inside the machine without any issues. Now after we've replaced the battery, we want to make some configuration to the BIOS. So we need to press delete to enter setup. And that'll take us into the BIOS menu. So let's just take a look at what configuration options we have available here. Uh, I, I took a look through this in quite a bit of detail and really I found the best thing to do is just to load the optimized defaults and then what we also want to do is set the power configuration so that the computer actually turns on as soon as power is applied. Loading the optimized defaults will give us options like a quick boot, you know, it'll do the quicker RAM test that type of stuff. If you started having issues, hardware issues, you suspect a RAM problem or whatever, you could come in and load the fail-safe defaults. That'll do a more thorough test of the hardware on boot. But for our purposes, we're just going to load the optimized defaults first. The configuration to have the computer come on when power is applied is actually in the integrated peripherals submenu. I actually would have expected it to be in the power management submenu, but if we go into integrated peripherals, and we scroll down we can see power on after power fail so we want to go on we could choose former status but I don't, I don't really think that would work out as well I think we'll just go with on as soon as power is applied 
the thing comes on and that's how we want it to be when it's inside the machine. So we will set that and we'll just exit saving the settings. The machine reboots and we should see it boot up straight into the Altercade game menu and the game should be working okay. Altercade and there we go. You notice the push one or two player start is flashing at a more reasonable rate. The graphics all seem to be working. Now I'm going to leave this sit here and go for a couple hours and just make sure it doesn't fail out. Because remember before we replaced the battery it would actually show us an error after a little while. And the thing would completely freeze and it would just go to a black screen with an error code. Now I'm just going to unplug the power, reconnect the power supply, and there it goes. It's starting up as soon as the power is applied. So that's how we want it to be configured. Boots up, it skips right past all the uh, checking the RAM and all that sort of stuff. Ultracade. And there we go. Actually booted really fast that time. So let's just start up a game. I don't have a sound or anything. Let's just start up Street Fighter 2. Telling us how to play. And there we go. Street Fighter 2. Now another interesting thing to note about this is the this PC has PS2 ports as well as USB. And I was able to use a PS2 keyboard to adjust the BIOS and that sort of stuff, but the PS2 keyboard didn't actually work with the games. Only the USB one did. So I guess that's how they've designed it. So that's that. We repaired our Altercade PC just by replacing that BIOS battery. It was a fairly simple fix, and in fact, I already have this stuff sold and passing it on to someone who's going to enjoy it more than me. Now I'm just going to put the case back on this thing, let it run for a couple hours, and I will call it good. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these kinds of videos. And if you have a question or comment, leave it below. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Ultracade. Cool stuff.